Maureen Duffy was born on the 21st of October 1933 in Worthing, Sussex, to an English mother and an Irish father. In her work, Duffy celebrates her heritage. Her first semi-autobiographical novel, That's How It Was, was published in 1962 and explores her childhood and her relationship to her mother, who she describes as so independent and brave and who was responsible for Duffy being so independent and brave. They went through the war together and were bombed together. Duffy's mother died of tuberculosis when Duffy was only 14 years old. Duffy's paternal heritage and her name are Irish. Although she has no memory of her father, her Irish roots perfuse her writing. The 1982 novel Londoners, set in her home city of London, is set during the time of the IRA bombings. It follows the cantos of Dante's Inferno. Maureen Duffy is known for being the first woman in the public eye to be open about her homosexuality. She was active in the campaigns to de decriminalise male homosexuality in the 1960s. And her 1966 novel, The Microcosm, which was an account of her own experiences as a gay woman, woman and those of others in London, helped thousands of women to understand their own feelings about their sexuality and to feel supported in a social context that didn't accept their identity. With the writer Bridget Brophy, Maureen Duffy formed the Writers' Action Group, which campaigned successfully for the passing of the public lending right in the UK in 1979, which ensured that writers would be paid for the use of their works in public libraries. Since then, she has been part of and initiated many organisations all over the world, supporting authors' rights and their copyright as a tool to allow them to make an independent living. Duffy's love of literature and languages is as evident in her early works as it is in her work today. In her latest poetry collection, published in 2020 by the Pottery Press, this is manifest in the poem, Mother Tongue. Mother Tongue. Where has it gone, the lost language of London? Is there a Peter Pan's land of wandering words that can't find tongues that remember them? Who breakfasts now on Burgoo? And where's the Brahma of a woman who stalked our streets, head held high above the upthrust of sculptured bosom, and no great fat omix she? And when was Kazi gentrified into toilet, perhaps when it came indoors out of the yard and coupled with a bath? We were worlds apart down back chats, far from the boulevards up west, where blokes sponsed sported bowlers instead of caps. Here the bright phrases could flower free, culled from trenches, India's foothills, nimble, fleet-footed San Ferian who had danced under fire and now lit up our dark terraces and narrow alleys, two up, two down, and with a scullery tacked on. Words were multicoloured, could be twisted or strung together like paper chains, among them the iridescent loops of rhyme told to sling your hook, tangy with the sea. You knew what to do. Or with a bloody shambles, take a butcher's, a gander, a shufti, see what your dough could buy. Weevil costin, someone would say, as you showed off something new, evoking a ghetto, or later the stink of gas. Instead of plain English, we spoke coloured, laced with snatches of music hall song. You must all lose your accents, the lecturer said on our first day at college. We had to learn a new speak, bereft of image, metaphor, rainbow colours of other lands. And now the process is complete, with a lingua anglica of global chatter homogenised, as if one language could make one people. Instead, a glass, steel and concrete babel has sprouted hate speech like fungi after rain, simplifying, denuding of any original dress. With sound bites for speed, banish the past participle until we are all sat or stood, plonked down, we would have called it. Motionless, chained behind phone or screen, Mute except for management speak, where words are just pieces on a board jumping over each other to take, not join. So let me hear Slav, Chichi, Creole weaving themselves into our common tongue and daubing it with all the palette of the world until it starts out again from the frame, vibrant, many coloured, as the fruits and faces of London's market stalls.